Hello, my name is Andrew Fagg. I'm a faculty member in computer science, and my research sits at the nexus of machine learning, robotics, computational neuroscience, and biological motor control. And this series of videos is about building up skills in constructing deep neural networks. We'll focus here in what neurons are and what individual neurons can do and in small collections of neurons can do, but that will set us up to do much bigger and more exciting networks. Brains and neurons have been studied for a very long time. However, it was only a century ago that Ramon E. Cajal posed what we refer to now as the neuron hypothesis. And that was that, in, that neurons actually did computation. One of his grand contributions was that he studied the anatomy of individual neurons and, and groups of neurons. And one of his exquisite drawings is shown here on the right-hand side. This is a single neuron from the cerebellar cortex of a cat. And what it shows are the primary pieces of an individual neuron. So this is this whole area here is, is the input side of the neuron. We refer to that as the dendritic tree. And signals that come into any any point within this tree, they flow down the tree and ultimately to the cell body, which is right here. And once enough input, enough positive input arrives at that cell body, the neuron will, will produce an output and that flows downwards down this axon and that provides input to additional neurons. Since that time, biologists, neuroscientists have studied brains and neurons, certainly at this anatomical level, but also in terms of what these neurons did. And in some sense, one can think of the, the computation side of things as really following two different pathways. One was trying to understand what these biological systems were doing. So the very careful modeling of different parts of neurons or, or of groups of neurons. And, and then there was also a group of researchers who began to study what we could do with these things computationally. So we saw very many levels of, of abstraction away from the biological details. And, and this is really what we're going to focus on here is, is that very abstract model. We use the term deep neural networks to refer to this idea of taking not just individual neurons or computing elements, but actually taking a whole set of them together in parallel, but also stacking these together in order to implement very complex functions from some input to some output. Now, these models have lots of parameters. And what's cool in general about machine learning, and it's true for neural networks and deep neural networks, is that we can derive these model parameters from some sort of a data set. Deep learning is a fairly general idea, and it can be used to solve a whole variety of different kinds of machine learning problems, some of which you may already be familiar with. So regression is something that many of you have been exposed to. This is the idea of taking some sort of an input and mapping that to some continuous output. So, so continuous variable, measuring a distance or, uh, or brightness of something. Another type of machine learning problem is that of classification where the the input is placed into one of several different categories. Am I looking at the image of a dog? Am I looking at a, a, at a cat? Am I looking at an elephant, et cetera? And reinforcement learning is, is a whole branch of machine learning in, in which we're training agents to make sequences of decisions in some environment that are somehow optimal with, with respect to some sort of evaluation metric. So these kinds of models are used to train up agents that play uh, board games, that play uh, video games, et cetera. So the outline for this small sequence of videos here, so we're first going to talk a little bit about linear regression. So we're all on the same page and, and then we'll branch from there into doing some nonlinear regression with individual neurons and solve a couple of different logic problems. And this will help illustrate what these individual neurons are capable of and what some of their limitations are. And then from there, we'll, we'll begin to build networks that involve multiple neurons. And then we'll finish up by doing an implementation in Python using the TensorFlow and Keras packages that are available there. 